Hey guys, it's DC here and today we have another episode of the CyberSec News. Today's stories, we have gas pump, point of sale vulnerability, power plants are under threat and the iPhone vulnerability that is locking users out. Okay, so jumping straight into the first story. Um, by the way, if you want to follow along, you can go to my website, cybersecguidance forward slash blog, and I'm posting a new story in there every single week, um, which I then read on the YouTube channel here. Anyway, moving on. Point of sales or POS machines in North American gas stations are under an upwards trend in attacks being targeted by cybercrime groups reported by Visa, and Visa is in the credit card solution. The goal of the attack is to scrape payment card data from an unknowing user of the FPOS scanner, which then is transmitted back to the attacker via a remote access Trojan or RAT. The malware is usually bought onto the POS system via a phishing email and later provides the attacker with direct network access, which then makes it possible to obtain admin credentials to other network devices so that they can move laterally. It is reported that most gas stations don't have any network segmentation, no surprise there, between cardholder data environments and the corporate network, making this type of attack very effective. This is pretty much the case in any sort of small business where um, they're just trying to churn through sales, basically. So even in like retail and stuff like that, often smaller retails, they only have one network and that's where everything sits. And um, it's sort of like a hacker's delight, I guess. It's <laughs> They can have a field day with this sort of attack in that sort of environment. Moving on, the malware used in the attack also created a temporary output file wmsetup.tmp which was used to house the scraped payment data. This file was previously identified in attacks attributed to the Fin8 and Fin8 associated malware, Visa has said. While the malware used in this attack was not identified in the attacks against the fuel dispenser merchants, it is possible Fin8 will use this malware in the future of its operations targeting fuel dispenser merchants. It is important to note that this attack vector differs significantly from skimming at fuel pumps, as targeting of point of sale systems requires the threat actors to access the merchant's internal network and takes more technical prowess than skimming attacks. Visa PFD says, Fuel dispenser merchants should take note of this activity and deploy devices that support chip wherever possible as this will significantly lower the likelihood of these attacks. Yeah, I mean what they've said in this article is pretty straightforward. That's basically what needs to happen to solve the problems and um, there's not a lot that people can do about it because money's fairly limited and also knowledge is quite limited in these small businesses. So, um, you know, usually their network is set up by the guy's son or his, his cousin or his uncle or whatever. Someone else is setting up this network and um, it's obviously not done correctly and that's just how it is. But um, anyway, moving on to the next article. SPPAT3000 Control Systems, distributed by Siemens, is reporting 17 different vulnerabilities which could lead to a stop in the electrical generation of power plants around the world. The affected product is used for orchestrating and supervising electrical generation at major power plants around the world, but namely in Germany and Russia. By exploiting some of these vulnerabilities, an attacker could run arbitrary code on an application server, thereby taking control of operations and disrupting them. Vladimir Nazarov, head of ICS Security at Positive Technologies, said in a media advisory issued on Thursday, this could potentially stop electrical generation and cause malfunctions at power plants where vulnerable systems are installed. Some guys in the Discord chat the other day were actually talking about exactly this. And, um, more so in gas pipelines, but it's sort of the same sort of thing with energy production facilities. Anyway, the vulnerabilities were discovered in two specific components of the platform. The application server, which had seven bugs, and the migration server, which had 10. The most severe of the issues can enable RCE on application server. Wow, that's bad. 
For instance, CVE 2019-18283, a critical deserialization of untrusted data bug would allow an attacker to gain remote code execution by sending specifically crafted objects to one of its functions, according to the Siemens advisory. That's, um, that's extreme, yeah. He went on to say, an additional 10 vulnerabilities were found in the MS3000 migration server, according to a positive technology statement, of these to enable remote reading and writing of arbitrary files. For example, an attacker could read etc. shadow, which contains hashes that could be used for brute forcing user passwords. Several heap overflows were identified, which could be exploited as part of a denial of service against the migration server or other attacks. Siemens have said that they are working on updates to resolve the issues. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I hope they get that sorted really quickly um, because the last thing you want is for you know, a hacker or a group of hackers to um, potentially take down energy facilities and then have you know, major electrical issues around wherever these power plants are. Alrighty, the last story here is a bug has been found in the AirDrop file sharing tool on iOS devices, which has been resolved in Apple's eighth update since September 2019. It might sound like old news, but it only gets released with Apple anyway after they fix the bug. I guess the bug bounty person reported the bug and it was fixed. This bug would let attackers temporarily lock out users of their iPhones and iPads. AirDrop does not place any limit on alerts sent by another iPhone user, so the screen remains engaged by the notification until a download is accepted or rejected, which then gives the attacker an ample opportunity to keep spamming a device and thereby blocking access. So it's basically like DDoS of uh, sharing files on AirDrop. In this case, the convenience of the AirDrop feature is hijacked to deny the availability of the entire phone. If there is a silver lining for this vulnerability, it's that it requires physical proximity, which at least means you cannot be attacked from anywhere on the internet. True facts, you do have to be pretty close. The denial of service bug dubbed AirDOS, cool name, lets an attacker infinitely spam all nearby iOS devices with the AirDrop share Pop up. The security researcher who discovered it, Kishen Bagaria, said in a blog post noting he reported the find to Apple in August but didn't go public to give the company a chance to issue a fix. Like I said, this has only just gone public now. So they had fixed it and it seems to be all good. This share pop up blocks a UI so the device owner won't be able to do anything on the device except accept or decline the pop up, which will keep reappearing. It will persist even after locking slash unlocking the device, he explained. But Gary posted a proof of concept after Apple released the update. Given the complexity of iOS and the app ecosystem, it's inevitable that vulnerabilities such as this will continue to be found and fixed, said Nudsen. For manufacturers such as Apple, finding and fixing as many vulnerabilities as possible before release is ideal. Some vulnerabilities will always remain undetected, however, so it's important to respond promptly. Um, you may know from the last week you asked me, which I just did, um, that someone was asking me if Apple or Facebook or any of those companies ever get hacked. Yeah, right here is proof that yes, you can hack into uh, those sort of systems. And usually it's it's on the device or user level. But um, yeah, anyway, there's reference articles down here that I got these news stories from to write my own articles. If you'd like to check out the article yourself, you can go to cybersecguidance.com forward slash blog. And uh, yeah, you can just go through and read this week's biggest news stories in cybersecurity. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Thanks, guys. I'll see you on the next one.